Good morning. Welcome back. I hope you had a great day one of CFS. We have another great day planned for you today. So I'd like to introduce our first speaker, uh, NACA's Executive Vice President, Andrew Lebovich. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, everyone. Sisters, brothers, distinguished guests, good morning and welcome back to day two of the world's preeminent aviation safety conference. As Christy said, I trust you all enjoyed yesterday, and I assure you that today's program will be no less exciting. At CFS, we cover so many important topics that are relevant to our national airspace system and our sacred trust to ensure its safety. We've discussed, or we will discuss, the implementation of new technologies, the effects of collaboration on the safety of the system, how we integrate new entrants, pilot controller relationships, teamwork, procedures, so many aspects of our universe that are critical components to ensuring that aviation remains the safest of all modes of transportation. But this morning, I want to focus on another aspect of our environment that is just as critical to the safety of the NAS, and that is our health and well-being, and more specifically, our mental health. Our fitness for duty, physiologically and mentally, is a component of safety and performance regardless of the type of job we hold. NACA members are proud aviation safety professionals who are responsible for improving, modernizing, and preserving the safety of the NAS. As critical safety professionals, many of our members are subject to stringent medical requirements and at times may encounter circumstances where they face temporary or potentially permanent medical restrictions. Discussing medical issues is hard. It's hard to do in our personal lives, and it's perhaps doubly hard to do professionally, as there is a stigma and a concern for the consequences they might have in relation to our employment, particularly when discussing issues of mental health. In 2020, NACA created and distributed to all facility representatives a reference guide entitled the Wellness Toolkit, a compilation of many of the important resources that are available to our members who may be confronting issues involving their personal mental health and well-being. This toolkit has been an invaluable in educating our members who may be aware of, unaware of the ways to obtain support and navigate through the complexities of the aeromedical landscape. Resources such as the Aviation Medical Advisory Service, Employee Assistance Program, Critical Incident Stress Management, and our UNAM long-term disability insurance are all contained in the toolkit. The toolkit also details others, perhaps less widely known, more specific processes. For instance, the process by which members with mental health conditions who are being treated with certain selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, may be able to obtain a medical clearance with special consideration. And for those members who are permanently medically disqualified, the toolkit provides a basic framework regarding potential opportunities for continued employment or benefits that may be available through an OPM disability retirement. A wealth of assistance is available to our members, but this is only a framework and a foundation from which we can build, and we must build. Now, more than ever, our members face tremendous challenges, which weigh heavily on each and every person. Short staffing, six-day work weeks, increased air traffic, constant training, a barrage from COVID, family issues, external stressors, the list is far too long to enumerate. But in this time of increased challenges, we find ourselves with opportunities. One of our greatest opportunities comes as a direct result of the COVID pandemic, a revitalized relationship with the FAA's Office of Aerospace Medicine. We have worked closely with aerospace medicine during these past two years, building a level of trust and understanding that has previously been lacking. We can leverage that relationship to make much needed improvements in other aeromedical areas, including the mental health arena. And what might we see in the future? We've already begun a dialogue with the Office of Aerospace Medicine regarding ways to improve and refine the SSRI protocols so those who might be able to secure clearance with special consideration are no longer subjected to endless bureaucratic delays for review and approval 
and can perhaps return to duty more quickly. A streamlined process would reduce what is currently a disincentive for individuals to explore whether it is something which may be appropriate for their unique circumstances. The FAA has already hired additional clinical psychiatrists to help improve the responsiveness and improve, achieve improved efficiencies. There are early stage discussions on the possibility of expanding the SSRI protocols to incorporate new medications or additional medication classes and policies regarding attention deficit disorder, ADD, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, are under review as the current science seems to indicate childhood and adolescence, ADD, ADHD can be outgrown. Working with new pharmacological staff at the FAA and in consultation with our AMAS experts, perhaps we will see changes in these areas in the future. One of the key aspects of making progress in addressing mental health issues is to lift the veil and destigmatize this medical topic. We see mental health being discussed more often in society as a whole. Mental health issues have taken the stage in very public forums. Just see the conversations with Simone Biles and Michael Phelps during the past Olympic Games and the long-awaited establishment of a national suicide and crisis lifeline, 988. These conversations must start occurring in our industry as well. As Dr. Hassan Shahidi, the President and CEO of the Flight Safety Foundation, recently stated in regards to the aviation industry, quote, organizations must implement a supportive environment and normalize mental health as part of a comprehensive approach to the well-being of their employees. Leaders need to instill within their organizations an openness that encourages individuals to come forward with mental health issues, to seek counseling, and if necessary, treatment. Peer support programs are one mechanism to achieve this goal. And airlines and their pilot unions have been on the vanguard of the efforts to create these structures. Peer support networks offer a confidential, non-judgmental, non-stigmatized environment where employees can identify and address mental health issues at their earliest stages. These programs are being embraced across the world as non-punitive and non-partisan safety programs and are starting to yield positive results. The International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, recently impaneled a mental health work group to explore the utilization of peer support or similar programs across the spectrum of aviation industries. And we recently met with that work group to offer our perspective on what is occurring or isn't occurring in the United States for those bargaining units that we represent. A peer support program is just one piece of the puzzle that we need to explore, and they may be applicable to our corners of the industry. We have engaged in very early preliminary conversations with aerospace medicine on whether such systems are indeed transportable to our members. The existing aerospace medicine leadership is very much committed to a new culture within the FAA. As the new federal air surgeon, Dr. Susan Northrop wrote in her June medical bulletin, as an aviation community, we need to change the narrative from never admit to mental health challenges because the FAA will ground you forever to get, help you, get the help you need early before the symptoms progress to major depression or anxiety. We look forward to continuing these conversations with the FAA so we can continue to ensure the overall well-being of our members and thereby improve their working conditions and ultimately ensure the safety of the NAS. We know that not every member who is fighting through mental health issues will be able to maintain their medical clearance. But we have seen too much pain, too much suffering over the years. Too many members have shied away from addressing their mental health. We have lost too many of our sisters and brothers to suicide. Status quo in this area cannot stand. It is somewhat serendipitous that I'm speaking to you about this topic in September, which is the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. We must seize this very important moment and collaborate with the FAA and other stakeholders on mental health. We must educate ourselves on what we have as resources and what resources we may need to develop. All of us, together, we can make a difference. We must make a difference.